Hello, hello, lovely year for artists. We're working on our textile art project at the moment and we're going to take inspiration today from Judith Scott, a true original artist who created these beautiful bound objects and we're going to create some bound objects together. It's called Binding Us Together and of course we're celebrating in our project multiculturalism and how our country is greater by all the people that come to it from around the world. So we're going to start off with a piece of hessian, an old piece of cloth, which we're going to roll up into a bit of a sausage shape. We get a few little bits of the scrap wool and then we can start tying it up. Now you're going to make one of these between the two of you. I found it quite tricky working on my own. You can have a go on your own if you want. I've put extra fabric in, but I do think it's easier working on this in pairs. And what we're doing today is we're creating a piece of artwork all together to go and do some yarn bombing, which is where we go and put up our textiles artwork out into the real world. So once you've made a little sausage shape with a few bits of the thread or wool, just keeping it in shape, you're going to just tie on another piece of wool and start wrapping and it's all about wrapping and binding it all together. That's what Judith Scott did over and over again, binding lots and lots of beautiful threads and strings and bits of fabric and things to create these incredible sculptures. So what I want you to do is to make sure you use at least five different colours of the threads, of the strings, of the wools, at least that. You know, the more you do, the better. The more you cover the fabric, that's the way we want it. We don't see any of that fabric if possible. So as you can see, it's quite tricky wrapping it round and round with one of you on your own. But if you work together, it's much easier because one of you can hold it while one of you binds it. And we can have a nice go at that. OK, so you just keep going, wrapping and wrapping and wrapping, changing the wool, changing the string. Keep going, keep going on and on and you want to use some of the thinner threads I think at the end some of those really bright colours use some of those and we can see here it's beginning to really build up now now what I need to do is to show you how you join the ends together so what you do if you can if you've got enough fabric left is you tie a loose knot just to sort of hold it together temporarily but what's actually going to hold it together is wrapping more threads over the top. So if you haven't got quite enough um, of the fabric left, don't worry. But if you can, tie a knot and then get binding again. And you want to bind it with the same colour walls that you've used or the same colour strings all the way along. Because we want it to disappear. We don't want it to be obvious that there was a join there. We want that shape to feel like it's continuous. So I'm using the same colour threads and just wrapping over that knot until it's vanished. Okay? Right. So I'm going to have to make some more for you to look at because I want to show you how to join these on together. So when I've finished this one, I'm gonna to have to make another one. You just make the one. Here I go, here's my second one. See how fast I can do it. It wasn't this fast when I was filming it, I can assure you. But the idea is, is this, our project binding us together. We are going to be really celebrating who we are as a school over all this project, all the different cultures, all the different nationalities of people that come from all over the world who come to Manchester and who've come to our school. And this is our first example of that by working together to make these bound objects. So once you have finished yours and someone else on your table or in your class has finished, you're going to start attaching them to each other. So I've just taken a bit of thread, tied it on and I'm wrapping again. I think the thinner thread works better for this, so the embroidery thread. So get yourself some of that and get binding them on the next one and the idea is that you'll build this up so if there's um, 30 of you in your class you should have about 15 of these by the end of the lesson and you're going to attach them all together 
and then you're going to take them down to some one of the fence or railings where you fancy probably in the front playground would look better i think and then you're going to tie them onto the fence and then there'll be a nice sign uh, explaining the project so if anyone wants to see it's like we've done this art project in the playground um, and this is yarn bombing there's lots of lovely examples of yarn bombing i'll show you now so yarn bombing is where you take art and you put it outside. It's kind of like graffiti, except it's with wool on threads and fabrics and things. So you can see some on trees, some on railings. We're going to put ours on our school railings. So here I am back here. I'm joining together some of the hoops that I've already made. And you can see how the sculpture is going to build up and it will build up in quite um, an interesting shape because it will just keep going and it might be long and thin. It might be big and round. It might be all sorts of odd shapes. So work together to build up something interesting and unique and every hoop will be unique at the same starting point of having the hessian and the threads but there's no two that can possibly be the same because it's the way you wrap them it's the choice of materials and that's what was so special about judith scott's work so when you finished go out and yarn bomb that playground kids have fun everyone bye